Hello and welcome. I'm Maria from So Through Time, and this time we're starting a capsule wardrobe from 1882 by making a day gown. Now, 1882 sits within the Victorian era and specifically the natural form era. The natural form era is the more softer, more natural silhouette between the two big bustle eras where you'd have that exaggerated ginormous butt. And this is kind of at the tail end, and <laughs> bustles were actually coming back. And you can see this in fashion plates that in 82, some gowns are fairly flat behind, and some have quite a bit of a shelf butt already. Most of this is created by the drapery, but there are also already real bustles being sold and being advertised for women. Most of them tend to still be the softer, what are stiffened with horsehair and other sort of stiffer materials used as like multiple ruffles in the butt area, but there are also petticoats that have a built-in metal wire bustle in them already at this point. The reason why I made a capsule wardrobe is basically the same reason why a lot of Victorian women had basically what we would consider capsule wardrobes, is because it is easier to make one skirt and then make multiple different tops and overskirts that you can mix and match to create different kinds of looks for different events and different situations. And that is what a lot of Victorians did. You can find still a lot of extant garments where there are multiple bodices to the same skirt. And on top of all of this, then people would also use older materials. You might have a full ensemble that you bought a few years ago that maybe parts of it are a little worn and frayed and maybe the sleeves don't look nice anymore. Maybe the top has a weird stain on it, but the rest of the gown is fine. So instead of throwing out the whole garment, you could rework it or use other piece, parts of it with new things so that you could have this mix and a match wardrobe where you could use those usable materials still. Or maybe you'd buy some really pretty expensive fabric and you couldn't afford quite enough for a gown, then you could use a cheaper fabric for another part of it. Or maybe you found just a remnant of a fabric and you can't make it work for the whole garment. Or like today, you bought something thinking like I did, I bought th this silk that I'm using for this day gown, um, actually for an Edwardian thing. And I bought it from Italy, so obviously I can't just head over to the store and get more. So what I did was I decided to mix and match it with my other pieces. And then for the skirt portion, I'm using black silk taffeta. And I'm going to be using this black, black silk taffeta for other parts of the other gowns to go with this capsule wardrobe later. The skirt portion of this is a very typical six gorge skirt from the era. It, this sort of pattern is a very basic skirt pattern from this era and actually the same kind of pattern except with a different kind of waistband is also what is typically used for petticoats. The books from uh, Fashions from the Gilded Age by Francis Grimble that I am using for most of these garments that has excellent basic skirt patterns, several of them, that you can draft into your own size. Now as for the other patterns that I'm using this time, both come from the first volume of the Fashions from the Gilded Age and unfortunately that is out of print currently and is extremely expensive usually if you can find on it online. So if you're interested in making these sort of garments and you don't have that book already, I would highly recommend trying to find one from your local library. If you watched my previous video on a natural form era garment, you'll notice that this time I do my bodice a little differently. I do not bone it this time. Last time I did sprung boning, and if you're interested in sprung boning and how it works and why to do sprung boning instead of just put bones in your bodice, I explain it all in there, so go watch that. But the reason I'm not doing that this time is because a lot of the fashion magazines of this era talk about how when the dress reform movement happened in the mid of the 19th century, 
one of the good things that came out of the dress movement was that they weren't boned. And they talk a lot about how they prefer this look and how there are still some seamstresses and people who make clothing and people, ladies who wear clothing who prefer their bodices boned, but how basically those ladies are being kind of old-fashioned and how they really shouldn't do that. And then they go on to talk about how some extremely um, naturalistic ladies take it so far, especially at summer resorts, and even go without a corset altogether. I cut out the underskirt in the both the fashion fabric and the lining. I serge the fashion fabric and the lining pieces together. This flat lines the pieces and finishes off the edges. Next, I sew the skirt pieces together. And then I fold the hem up twice an inch and sew it on. This will be covered by the trimmings, so it doesn't matter that it's machine sewn. I pleat the back of the skirt to match the waistband length. Then I sew the waistband onto the skirt. For the hem decoration, I knife pleat two rows of six inch wide strips of cotton sateen folded in half. This is both to make the hem less susceptible to water damage and because I am saving as much silk taffeta as possible. I pleated three 60 inch strips for each row. Next, I box pleat three 54 inch long strips of seven inch wide silk taffeta so that it covers the top of the knife pleated row. I don't measure anything other than the height of my strips and the pleats are just eyeballed. Then the pleats are machine sewn down. The bodice pattern is drawn out using the crack size ruler for half of your full bust measure. You use the ruler to find the places for the dots given in the back pattern drawing and just connect the dots to form your pattern pieces. The book didn't have a ruler in my 39 inch bust. I was in between sizes, but since I have a fairly narrow back, I decided to size one down and just add an inch on either side of the center front. This worked well for my body, but do a mock-up to figure out what works for you. Here's the first bit. I will need to make an extra dart there because um, my bust flares out so much that I can't get it to lie smoothly otherwise. Other than that, it looks pretty good. Front needs a little taking out and obviously I need a different kind of chemise because this one not only shows from the neck but also because I've gained a bit of weight it leaves a weird bump there because my bust doesn't have room to fall in its proper place. But other than that, it looks pretty good. I used the mock-up for my lining and then just cut out the fashion fabric silk. 
The bodice pieces get historically flat lined, so the bodice lining and fashion fabric get sewn together in one. According to the pattern, the collar is shaped exactly like the bodice, so to make sure they match each other exactly, I draw the collar piece pattern onto the ready assembled bodice. For my sleeve cuff, I trust my pattern pieces. The cotton plush fabric I'm using for my collar gets folded over a sateen lining on, at the outer edge and then attached to the bodice. And then a bias tape gets sewn on the inside of the bodice encasing all the raw edges. The decorative plush cuffs are hand sewn onto the sleeve. And once everything else is done, I do one final fit check and mark the places for my buttonholes and sew them on. For my buttons, I'm using vintage glass buttons. These were very popular in the Victorian era and can still be found in stores today. For the overskirt, I used the overskirt for habit suit from Fashions of the Gilded Age Volume 1. This pattern is from 1880, but the similar styles are still seen in 82. This pattern in the book is 1 8th of a size, so for the front piece, I just scanned it on at my computer as a PDF and enlarged it to 800% and then printed it out as a poster and then taped the pieces together. Since the back piece is just a rectangle, I measured the drawing in the book and just calculated the height and width of the back piece and drew it straight onto my fabric. I actually made a mistake and did the height only of the piece only four times bigger than it was in the book, but that actually worked out really well since the skirts weren't that long in 82 anyways and I had a very limited amount of the striped silk. Then I sew the front pieces together and add darts so that the front piece really hugs your hip curve. And sew the front to the back and add a hem facing of the fashion fabric. and fell all the raw edges. These would typically be bound with bias binding, but because I made such a small a seam allowance because of my limited amount of fabric, that this was just easier. And then I cut a 10 inch slit down the center back to be the skirt opening. And fell the raw edges. And then pleat the back of the skirt to match the waistband. and sew on the waistband. Then a quick try to make sure everything fits the way it's supposed to before I turn the revers in the front. Then I tack the revers in place with glass buttons that are like the ones on the bodice, but just bigger. And here is the final look with all the pieces together. Since this is a daytime look, the neckline was usually filled with some sort of scarf or collar just to bring more interest to the outfit and also so that you could change the look up a little bit. All in all, I'm quite pleased with the fit of the garment. I am happy with how I got it, even without the boning. It does provide a softer silhouette and softer, less structured look than if it has boning, like my other bodice that is boned 
but I kind of like it, so maybe I'll do it again. I'd say the difference between a boned and unboned natural form Arag garment is that the boned one looks more tailored and structured and it provi provides a more rigid silhouette than this that provides a lot softer of a silhouette though there isn't a huge difference otherwise let me know down below in the comments which one you prefer do you prefer the boned more tailored look or the softer silhouette of an unboned bodice I'll leave you guys with these final images of the dress, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button because it really does help out, and if you haven't already subscribed and you want to do that, that would be great because I would love you to join my other adventures where I will be finishing this capsule wardrobe, and I'll be doing other things in other eras soon too. See you again next time. Bye!